$1.5 billion per launch. That's what NASA paid for a single space shuttle flight. SpaceX does it today for a fraction of that cost. You can get an idea of exactly how much. Under $100 million for a regular flight. And they're using the same rocket again and again. On December 8th, something historic happened. A Falcon 9 rocket with tail number B1067 launched for its 32nd time. 32 flights, one rocket. The entire space shuttle program flew 135 missions over 30 years with five different orbiters. This single rocket has done nearly a quarter of that by itself. But this isn't simply a story about SpaceX beating NASA. It's about evolution, about how each era of spaceflight solved the problems it needed to solve. NASA proved it was possible. SpaceX is proving it's sustainable. In today's TechMap episode, we're breaking down that evolution across four themes – cost, reusability, access, and what comes next. Let's start with money. Because in the end, cost determines what's possible. The Apollo program put humans on the moon. Each Saturn V rocket cost roughly $1.2 billion in today's money. After every launch, it ended up at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Gone. That was the trade-off NASA had to make. Why? Because in the 1960s, the goal wasn't efficiency. It was proving America could do what seemed impossible. Beat the Soviets. Plant a flag on another world. Cost wasn't the priority. Capability was. And the National Space Agency delivered. Six successful moon landings. An achievement that still stands as one of humanity's greatest. But that approach couldn't last forever. The space shuttle was supposed to change everything. Reusable spacecraft, flying like airplanes, making space routine and affordable. NASA projected 50 flights per year at 10 to $20 million each in 1970s year dollars. Reality was different. The shuttle flew maybe four to five times a year, and each flight cost $1.5 billion after you factored in refurbishment, processing, and standing army of contractors. Over 30 years, the program cost about $200 billion. Here's the thing. That wasn't NASA's fault. They were working with 1970s technology and political constraints. The shuttle had to satisfy the Air Force, satisfy Congress, satisfy multiple missions. It became a compromise. A brilliant, complex, expensive compromise. Then SpaceX arrived with a different question. Not what's possible, but what's sustainable? A Falcon 9 launch costs SpaceX roughly 15 to $20 million when they reuse the booster. For customers, they charge 60 to $70 million. Compare that to $1.5 billion. That's a 95% cost reduction. How? By accepting that perfection is the enemy of good enough. The Falcon 9 isn't as capable as the shuttle was. It can't retrieve satellites from orbit. It can't carry the same variety of payloads. But it does one thing incredibly well. It launches satellites cheaply and repeatedly. SpaceX also had advantages NASA never had. They could iterate fast. When a Falcon 9 exploded on the pad in 2016, SpaceX investigated, fixed it, and flew again in four months. NASA would have spent years on review boards. They could focus. One vehicle, one mission profile, perfect it. NASA had to juggle political pressures from all directions. And crucially, they stood on NASA's shoulders. Every lesson from Apollo, from the shuttle, from decades of NASA research, SpaceX learned from all of it. They didn't start from zero. This is the evolution. NASA spent billions proving reusability was worth pursuing. SpaceX spent millions making it work. The promise of reusability isn't new. Rocket pioneers dreamed about it for a century. NASA tried, the Soviets tried, everyone failed until SpaceX. But why did it finally work? Start with design philosophy. 
The space shuttle was complicated because it had to be. The orbiter, external tank, and solid rocket boosters, three major elements with completely different recovery methods. The boosters splashed into the ocean and were fished out by ships. The external tank burned up in the atmosphere. The orbiter landed on a runway. Each flight required over 30,000 thermal protection tiles to be individually inspected. Any crack or gap could be catastrophic, as Columbia proved in 2003. The shuttle needed months of refurbishment between flights. SpaceX took a different approach. The Falcon 9 is a single stick. Nine engines at the bottom, fuel tanks in the middle, payload on top. Simple. After launching, the first stage flips around, reignites three engines, and lands vertically, either back at the launch site or on a drone ship in the ocean. No splashdown, no corrosive salt water, no months of teardown. The first attempts were spectacular failures, rockets tumbling, exploding, missing the ship entirely. SpaceX released a blooper reel of landing failures. They learned from every single one. Today, they land with over 95% success. B1067 has 32 perfect landings. That's more consistent than most airline pilots. But here's what makes it revolutionary. After landing, the rocket is inspected, refueled, and ready to fly again in as little as two to three weeks. The fastest turnaround was 21 days. Compare that to the shuttle's months-long refurbishment. NASA couldn't do this in the 1970s. The materials weren't strong enough. The computers weren't fast enough for precision landing. The manufacturing wasn't cheap enough to mass-produce engines. By 2015, when Falcon 9 first landed successfully, all those pieces existed. Carbon fiber composites, flight computers that could run complex calculations in real time, 3D printing for rapid engine production. SpaceX also had something NASA didn't, the luxury of failure. When NASA loses a vehicle, Congress holds hearings. When SpaceX loses a vehicle during testing, they shrug, learn, and launch the next one. This is what evolution looks like. NASA showed reusability was the right goal. The shuttle proved some concepts worked and others didn't. SpaceX inherited those lessons and had the technology, the business model, and the freedom to push through. 32 flights on one booster. That's not just impressive. It's validation of five decades of aerospace engineering, finally reaching maturity. Lower costs and reusability unlock something bigger, access. In the Apollo era, only superpowers could reach space, the US and the Soviet Union. That was it. The barrier was measured in billions of dollars and national level of technical capability. The shuttle era expanded access slightly. European Space Agency, Japan, Canada, allied nations could participate. But it was still a club of the wealthy and technically advanced. Today, universities launch their own satellites. High schools have built CubeSats that fly on Falcon 9. Developing nations are starting space programs. The barrier keeps dropping. On that December 8th launch, B-1067 carried its 32nd mission, deploying Starlink satellites. That flight also marked SpaceX's 3,000th satellite launched in 2025 alone. 3,000 satellites in one year. Let that number sink in. From 1957 to 2000, 43 years of spaceflight history, humanity launched about 6,000 satellites total. SpaceX did half of that in 2025. This is the democratization of space. Over 7,000 Starlink satellites currently orbit Earth, bringing high-speed internet to remote areas. Mountain villages in the Andes, islands in the Pacific, rural farms in Montana, all connected. NASA's mission was never about mass access. It was about exploration, about science, about pushing boundaries. They succeeded brilliantly at that. The Hubble Space Telescope, the Mars Rovers, the James Webb Space Telescope. These are NASA achievements that commercial companies couldn't and wouldn't fund. 
SpaceX's mission is different. To make space routine. Make it boring. Make it a utility, like electricity or highways. Both are necessary. Think about it this way. NASA is like the Lewis and Clark expedition. They mapped unknown territory, proved the journey was possible, and opened the path. SpaceX is like the railroad companies that followed. They built the infrastructure, lowered the cost, and brought thousands of people along. Neither could exist without the other. The student in Bangladesh who can now access research databases through Starlink Internet. That's built on decades of NASA satellite technology. The startup is planning a lunar lander because Falcon 9 has made launch affordable. They're using navigation systems NASA developed. This is evolution, not replacement. NASA still launches the most advanced scientific missions. SpaceX handles routine cargo and crew to ISS. Commercial companies are building space stations. Nations that never had space programs are buying launch services. The ecosystem is diversifying, and that's exactly what needed to happen for space to become permanent. 32 flights are impressive, but it's just the beginning. SpaceX is currently testing whether Falcon 9 boosters can fly 40, even 50 times. Some boosters are already past 20 flights. The engineering margins keep expanding. But Falcon 9 isn't the end goal. It's the proof of concept. Starship is next. The largest rocket ever built. Fully reusable. Both stages. If it works, launch costs could drop another order of magnitude, from $70 million per flight to potentially under $10 million. What becomes possible then? Regular cargo flights to Mars. Lunar bases with consistent resupply. Space stations that aren't limited by launch costs. Manufacturing in orbit. Tourism beyond just brief visits. NASA is part of this future too. Artemis missions will use SpaceX's Starship as the lunar lander. NASA's scientific instruments will fly on commercial stations. The partnership continues, just in a different form. This is the pattern of all technology evolution. Governments fund the impossible. Private companies make it practical. Then everyone benefits.